Have you ever tried Caesar Strip Lock Pro before? Have you had questions about it? Are you still curious about how it works when it's applied onto that garment? Uh, whatever it is, I have a very special decoration zone episode today for you where I'm gonna go through various applications using Caesar Strip Lock Pro. So before we get started, if you can all do me a huge favor and hit press that like and subscribe button, that'd be greatly appreciated. Make sure you hit this, the bell and all the other fun stuff. All right, let's get started. I want to give a little bit of a backstory of strip lock because it has changed over the years. It's actually one of our oldest heat transfer vinyls uh, before it was just called strip flock. And before that, it was just, um, it kind of had the same effect that it has today. It just, the only real difference was that it was a cold peel. So after you do the application, you had to wait till it cooled down before you could peel the carrier. Um, this new revamping of our strip flock is now called strip flock pro. So that might be for those that are questioning why it turned into pro is because we reformulated it over the years so that you have the ability now to have a faster application. You can heat, heat apply it and not wait until it cools down to peel the carrier off. Now, the uniqueness about strip flock pro is the overall effect of this product. It does have a very um, suede-like feel to it. It is dimensional. It is 410 microns, so that doesn't mean anything to you. Again, if you're used to Easy Weed being a super thin product, it's about four to five times thicker than Easy Weed. But that's great because it does add dimension. It helps with the uniqueness of what the product is, um, the feel of it, the look the things you can make it accentuate, I guess, of your design or whatever you're decorating. Um, the other very unique thing about Strip Lock Pro that some people that even use it don't know is that you can layer Strip Lock Pro directly on top of one another. And you can layer other Caesar heat transfer vinyls directly on top of Strip Lock Pro. All right, so a question we get a lot, not only for a particular heat transfer vinyl, but all of our heat transfer vinyls and all of our products really, is what are some of the recommended cut settings? So for those that are watching, I, some of you might already know this, but we have a wonderful app that you can download right to your phone or tablet. Uh, just look up Caesar HTV or Caesar NA in your app or Google Play Store. It's the first app that will pop up. And in the app, we do have all the products that we make as well as application instructions and our cutting recommendations. So if you were looking for what we're going to be using today in Strip Lock Pro, you can go right to the app in whatever vinyl cutter you're using. You, we have a ballpark start. So not all of them are gonna work out for everybody because all vinyl cutters are in different conditions. So this is gonna depend on how good is your blade right now, how good is your mat, how good is the, the machine itself. Um, so these are ballpark set settings that you can start with. So what we have down for the silhouette is going to be at the Auto Blade 3, 4, somewhere around there. Heat transfer flocked. The force, force is gonna be at six, and the speed is at five. Again, it's all on the app, so don't worry what I'm saying. You can go right to it on that, or our website, which is just caesarna.com, and we have all this information for you. So, I want to show you two different scenarios I have, because I know some of you might get some Caesar product in a roll. Um, of course, we have our friends at Michael's who sell our products and they do come rolled up. And sometimes this might happen to your product, which might, might be problematic when it goes to putting onto your mat. If your mat, like myself here, it's not overly tacky. So if I just laid this down onto my mat, if I pressed it down, it's going to inevitably kind of roll back up. Uh, we do get questions about this quite a bit with our tech support. All you really need to do 
is use a little bit of painter's tape. If you have that lying around, some people use masking tape and just cut off either a strip or a couple strips of it for the top and bottom. And you can just place the painter's tape or masking tape right at the top of your vinyl. All you have to make sure is that you peel off that excess so you're not cutting into it. Don't let it rip on itself. Okay, so just lay some painter's tape onto it at the top and the bottom of it. And then you can take it over to your vinyl cutter and start cutting. Again, you wanna remove the excess parts of it so you're not cutting into it. And again, if you're using it and it's going over the material, make sure that you set it up to where it's not cutting into the tape. But if you already have a mat that is tacky enough, you should be okay with it. We do understand that this does happen, especially if the rolls have been around for a while. So it's not to worry, they're not ruined. You can still absolutely use them. So I'm gonna actually use another sheet for this. So I'm gonna set this up on my mat. Take it over to my silhouette. Okay, so in Silhouette Studio, the first thing you're gonna do is bring in your design. You wanna make sure you're working with vector images. Um, so if you don't have the design studio or the business edition, you may bring in rastered image. Make sure that you do the auto trace on it that you have vector lines in order to cut heat transfer vinyl. Okay, once you pull your design into Silhouette Studio, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have it sized correctly, you have it positioned on your mat correctly. The next thing you're gonna do is make sure that you have the correct machine set up, your orientation's good if you're using a mat. Uh, all that looks good. Now we're gonna go to send, and here's where you're gonna set up your cut settings. So right now I have to adjust mine. Again, I'm gonna start at what we recommend on the app, which is the heat transfer flocked setting. And if you have other suggestions or other recommendations that you use, I don't wanna change that. Uh, so use what works. I'm gonna adjust my force to six, and then uh, the speed is gonna be at five. My blade is set to four. You can be between three and four. Remember, it is a thicker material. So this is why it's extremely important to make sure you do test cuts first, to make sure that I am at the right depth, the right force, the right speed for my cutter. So I'm just gonna hit test and it's gonna run. All right, so as I can tell with this, it did not cut deep enough. So I need to make sure that I go back, increase my pressure a little bit more and kind of work from there. So I just moved my force from six to 10 for this next test cut. Again, you might have to do this a couple times just to make sure you're at the correct depth. Perfect. As you saw, it takes a couple attempts sometimes. Again, all of our heat transfer vinyls are different. The setting recommendations we have were done when a machine may have been in a different condition. So you do need to take some time to play with the settings. And it took me three tries to figure out exactly where I needed to be for this one. Sometimes the colors can have an influence on how easily it's cut. Uh, so I'm just warning everybody that you need to take the time to set your vinyl cutter up correctly to have that successful cut. But now I am confident that I'm gonna send my job and it's gonna be cut correctly. So I'm ready to send my full job. I have my settings good to go. All I have to do is hit send. And of course, very, very important for those who have never used heat transfer vinyl or Caesar product, you need to reverse our heat transfer vinyl. So strip flock is a product that you need to make sure is sent mirrored. So thankfully in silhouette, you have a pop-up that says send mirrored or send as is. With strip flock pro, you wanna send it mirrored. Okay, so now you have a good idea on how to start 
with cutting the Strip Flock Pro. Again, please make sure you reference the Caesar app or our website if you have questions on that with uh, cut recommendations, as well as heat application settings. So if I needed to know what I have my heat press set to for Strip Flock Pro, I can go to the app and we have 310 degrees. It's gonna be 15 seconds, medium pressure. I am using the Caesar Craft heat press, but if you don't have a heat press, if you only have a home iron, you could still absolutely apply Caesar Strip Lock Pro and almost all our other heat transfer vinyls with a home iron. So don't be discouraged you don't have a heat press. Um, again, we do have the home iron application instructions on the app, on the website. So if you do wanna know how that's done, uh, you can always visit there. So I'm gonna have my heat press is cooking right now again up to 310 degrees. I have five colors for this first project I'm gonna do, which is showing you layering Caesar Strip Lock Pro on top of one another. So I have five Strip Lock Pro colors before me. I'm gonna weed all of this. Again, you wanna use a Caesar weeder or whatever weeder you're using. You're gonna pierce the corner and peel up. Now, this is gonna be the first time where you experience that Strip Lock Pro does actually kind of have a um, pressure sensitive carrier. So it does have a sticky carrier. Now, for those that are familiar with Caesar heat transfer vinyls, um, you may be comfortable or familiar by now that our products that have a sticky carrier are a good indicator that they're a warm peel when you're heat applying. Um, so that again, the benefit speeding up your application process. Now, for those that are probably asking if you can do the heat press trick with Strip Lock Pro, it's not suggested. For those that don't know what the heat press trick is, uh, for all of our easy weed colors to speed up the weeding process, you could use your heat press. You're gonna heat up that lower platen by closing it warm it up, lay your cut piece on it, and it's gonna weed even nicer. Strip Lock Pro, because of the formulation of it, because of the surface, again, you're gonna feel it now, and it does have a soft suede-like feel. You're gonna feel some tension when you're pulling on it as well, so you might get a little bit of ripping when you're going, so be careful, make sure your cut is good. But as you can see, you can still cut really nice, fine detail with Strip Lock Pro. This is my final color, final layer. Okay, see, I even weeded up a couple pieces. So because it does have the pressure sensitive backing, you can lay those pieces back down. It's not ruined. This is the other importance of making sure that your cut is good. So when you're pulling your piece up, as you see, that one piece here is lifting up too. I don't want that to come up, so I'm just gonna use my weeder to kind of place it and keep it down. It's not gonna be in the exact spot I need it, but I'm just gonna keep it there until I can go back and kind of place it back into where it needed to be. So again, the sticky carrier is beneficial, not only for the fast application, but if in case anything lifts up, you could place it right back down onto the carry sheet. All right, so now we have all five pieces weeded and ready to go. The heat press is cooking. Let's get started. All right, for the application, um, when you question what kind of substrate or what kind of textiles can Strip Lock Pro be applied to, again, reference our website app. We do have the recommended uh, fabrics we suggest for Strip Lock Pro. So today I am just gonna be using 100% white cotton. First thing I'm gonna do on my heat press is test to make sure that I have proper pressure set. So I wanna be at a medium pressure, which to me is perfect. So I have a flat surface. If you've never used a Caesar Craft heat press, it is a nine by 12 heat press. So nine by 12 is the dimension of where I have to press. Um, and I have another application later in this class to show you where I have to use this a couple times for an application. Um, so I'm gonna be doing the five Strip Lock Pro colors. These are technically four of them layered onto one. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I kind of like to set it up where I line it up as a full transfer. Just uh, in some cases it helps so that I can get kind of picture the full 
it's like scale of this transfer and how it's going to go onto the garment. And then for placement purposes. So in this case, since it is the bottom layer is one solid piece, I don't have anything going around it. I can just place that where I want. This is a smaller logo. Um, trying to keep up with the trends of the 90s, bringing it back. So the first thing, I'm going to apply the Strip Lock Pro for about five seconds. Now, those that have used Easy Weed and all that, you know about the one second tack. You can tack it for one second, peel hot. Strip Lock Pro, although it is still a warm peel, we don't recommend tacking for one second. So I'm still gonna give this for about a five second tack. And then you can peel warm. If you do see any lifting, that's okay too. Don't peel it all the way up, but you can go back. That just indicates that you need more pressure. You need more time on it. Um, make sure you're getting even pressure, especially those that are using a home iron or the easy press. You still need to make sure you're pushing down and adding some pressure. That's very important. Okay, now I'm just gonna basically cruise through these layers and do the same exact thing I just did. So this next layer, I'm gonna place it on there, tack for five seconds and uh, keep cruising along. If anyone has any questions, again, as we're going through all of these applications, please do not hesitate to ask. We will get to your questions. Now this is my fifth and final layer, but I'm still gonna tack this down for the five seconds. The reason why I did the five seconds for my fifth and final layer instead of doing the entire application press uh, in peeled hot was because I, that carrier sheet is kind of over the other layers on my design and that carrier sheet can cause those lines when you press. Um, so if you want to avoid doing that, you want to do this five second tack for Strip Lock Pro, peel hot. Now, I have to go back and make sure I press for the full duration because technically not all layers got the full press. So you want to take a piece of uh, Teflon or the parchment paper, whatever you're using for a cover sheet, place it over the full design. Now I'm going to press this for an entire 10 seconds. Now that's gonna make sure that all five layers of Strip Lock Pro are properly bonded. And that's all it takes. Five colors of Strip Lock Pro. Again, do not be scared to layer Strip Lock Pro. This is something that a lot of people question us about. Um, and this is definitely one of the many heat transfer vinyls by Caesar that is layerable. So, on to the next application. Okay, now we're gonna go into mixing different Caesar HTV with Caesar Strip Lock Pro. So for this application, I'm gonna be using our glitter, our Strip Lock Pro, and our holographic pearl heat transfer vinyl and actually mix it all together. Now, it is very important to kind of know which heat transfer vinyl you're using. Can it be layered on? How do you need to design your artwork in order to have it work conducively uh, for a successful press? So a rule of thumb for those that don't know, with Caesar glitter, it is not recommended to have anything layered on top of the glitter. Um, so the way we're designing this is that it's actually a knocked out effect to where it's kind of puzzle pieced into each other. So I'm gonna have the glitter go down first, strip lock is gonna be pieced inside of it, giving the illusion of the layering. And then I'm gonna actually layer the holographic pearl directly on top of the strip lock pro. So I get it, it's a lot, but this is just something to toy around with, get used to, to experimenting with playing with different heat transfer vinyls and what works together to really add that unique effect. Um, so again, I'm working with another 100% cotton t-shirt. I am gonna stay on the craft heat press here. Um, for those that are using a heat press, or a home iron, I'm sorry, 
If you're using a home iron or an easy press, you could still absolutely apply all three of these. Again, remember, make sure you're using the correct temperature and pressure when you're applying on it. Okay, so just like the example before, I kind of like to line my design up so that I can kind of get a gauge of where the placement's gonna be on the t-shirt. This is not how it's actually gonna be applied. You're not gonna apply it directly on top of itself. So this is only one, tr one transfer at a time, just so I can find my lineup. Okay, so once you have that, you wanna make sure you peel off that top layer. So with Caesar glitter, with the heat press, proper time and temperature, or proper temperature and pressure, I should say, you can press glitter for one to two seconds and peel the carrier hot. So that is a benefit of having a heat press is to be able to do these fast applications. Also, that one to two seconds, the benefit there is so that I don't shrink my garment because high heat will shrink your garment, which will cause uh, it, it will cause registration issues, I should say. Okay, now I have my layer of Strip Lock Pro down. Again, that was puzzle pieced into the glitter. It's not layered directly on top of the glitter. But I am gonna press this for one to two seconds. No, I'm sorry, I'm gonna press it for about five seconds for the Strip Lock Pro. And I can peel that hot. So I could find exactly where it lined up. It lined up perfectly. Now my final layer is the holographic pearl heat transfer vinyl is going to be layered directly on top of the Strip Lock Pro. Again, to show you that you can layer things on top of Strip Lock Pro. So holographic pearl is not a quick tack. So I am gonna press this for the full duration. I'm gonna press all three layers. This is gonna make sure they're all bonded together. Okay. So holographic pearl or any of the holographic heat transfer vinyls, you do wanna give it a little bit of time to cool off before you peel the carrier. So just take it off of the heat press, put it up against something cool or go on to your next project, let that cool off before you peel uh, that carrier off. Once you do, perfect. An absolutely stunner of a design here with the dimension of all of all three, the glitter, the strip lock pro, which gives it that dimensional pop out. And then of course that awesome holographic pro that changes colors as you move around it. So again, very versatile with the Strip Lock Pro. You can mix it with so many other Caesar heat transfer vinyls. Uh, this was just a quick example so you can get the wheels spinning. Again, please feel free to ask any questions as we go along. If you have questions about this, questions about what Caesar heat transfer vinyls might be layerable, what works with one another, feel free. Um, we're gonna move on to the next application though. Okay. This next one is totally outside of the box. Um, this is something that we just kind of recently discovered using Strip Lock Pro. So we're really excited to show you guys and hopefully inspire you to do something similar. But that is actually using Caesar Strip Lock Pro heat transfer vinyl over canvas to be able to do your own personalized coloring. I uh, thought this was a very unique interesting idea for you to do uh, one of the very many things you can do with strip lock pro uh, so we're going to do that real quick so i have a small little piece of canvas you can use pretty much any type of cardstock, but this is a little bit more durable uh, for the purpose of coloring as well as for the heat application this is where a lot of people this is again our heat transfer vinyls are made for textiles so if you're ever trying to heat apply on something that isn't a fabric, it is entirely experimental and results will and can, can and will vary uh, depending on what kind of substrate you're heat applying on. So know what you're heat applying on. Will it withstand the heat of the heat press or your home iron? So you do wanna make sure you test it first. 
Um, I'm, I already know it works, so on the heat press. So I'm gonna first test to make sure that my pressure is where it needs to be. It is a little bit higher because this is a thicker material than the t-shirts I've been pressing earlier. So I'm gonna dial the pressure back. I'm back to a medium pressure. Again, I'm using Striplock Pro. Black is just gonna be a lot better to use because if you go outside the lines, uh, you won't see the markers kind of saturate into it. So using black Strip Flock Pro is kind of recommended, but you can use whatever you like. I'm just gonna try to line this up the best I can. Um, you know, we cut it, we estimate the size. Uh, sometimes it's not 100% perfect. If you wanna cut it even larger and then hand trim it around the edges so that it's extremely flush to the canvas, you can do that. I'm gonna cover sheet. Now, since this is something that isn't going to be laundered, I don't need to really necessarily press it for the full duration, and I don't really need to be as high on the heat press as I am right now at 310. When you are pressing on things that aren't gonna be washed, you have a little bit more wiggle room with how you do the application. I am gonna keep it at 310. I'll press this, let's say six seconds. Just see how that works. If it doesn't work, you can always go back and repress it. So there's nothing wrong with that. If you see any lifting, you may need to go back and press it. It looks like I got a little bit of lifting. Not too bad, and that's all right. If you have that lifting, we're just gonna go back, use the cover sheet, press it for a few more seconds. It's not gonna hurt anything. It may be an indicator, longer application, more pressure on your heat press. That's it. Okay, so I have my coloring canvas page all set to go. I am just using uh, these washable markers, kind of ironic because we're not going to really wash it. But um, you know, this is just an example. Whatever markers you're using at home, you could use them on this canvas. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to color this in. We'll speed it up. out of this world. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Again, very out of the box idea. This is something you could do with your friends, your family, the kids, grandkids, whoever you have around that wants to color in. A lot of fun you could do. Still make original pieces of artwork. Obviously with the canvas, now you can actually clip something onto it so you can hang it up onto a wall, put it in your office, put it somewhere. Uh, but yeah, this is just another very unique thing you can do with the Caesar Strip Flock Pro heat transfer vinyl. Again, it helped me stay inside the lines because yes, I'm terrible at coloring. So having this is certainly a helpful tool. Um, so again, please let me know what you think of these projects so far. What you think of this one? If you have questions, keep chiming them in the, in the uh, comments below. Um, but yeah, we're gonna cruise on to the next one. Okay, this next application is going to be showing you what we like to describe St uh, Strip Lock Pro to some people as a faux embroidery look. So when we use Strip Lock Pro with our thinner products, like what I'm gonna to use today, which is our Easy Weed Stretch, that's our thinnest heat transfer vinyl, the Strip Lock Pro gives the illusion I know a lot of embroiders out there are like, no, it doesn't, no, no, no. I get it. But it gives the illusion of a uh, satin stitch if you look from afar, it, just because of that suede look that the Strip Lock Pro has. Um, so that's what I'm gonna show in this demonstration, layering it on top of Caesar Easy Weed Stretch. I didn't weed this piece of Easy Weed Stretch because I did mention a little bit ago about using the heat press to speed up your weeding process. So I'm gonna show what I was talking about when I said the heat press trick. Um, what I'm gonna do here, like I said, you wanna make sure that your heat press is on to the temperature you're set to. I'm gonna let the upper platen warm up that lower platen for a few seconds, and that lower platen is gonna retain the warmth of that upper platen. So this is gonna be warm. You don't wanna put your hands on it for too long because it is hot. But I am gonna lay my cut piece of Easy Weed Stretch directly onto that lower platen. 
And what that's doing is warming up the adhesive on that carrier sheet. So when I go to weed out my excess material, I'm barely pulling at this. Now you wanna be careful when you're doing that if you have a clamshell heat press like this. If you have a swing away, you have a little bit more room to work with it. But as you can see, it's just bare, I'm barely pulling at this. Uh, it's usually more effective when I'm there at the show showing you guys. Um, but as you saw, one giant piece to peel this off, I'm gonna go back and pull out my cavities again, like a breeze, no problems. Make sure your cut is good. And this, what I'm using right here is Easy Weed Stretch. It's not Strip Flock Pro. So this is my underbase of my um, design for my back of this shirt. Uh, as you can see, it does have kind of a frosted carrier. That's an indicator that it's Easy Weed Stretch opposed to regular Easy Weed for those that use our other products. Okay, so I'm gonna be using, a, or I'm gonna be applying a front and back to this shirt. So we're gonna do one of those designs that goes kind of over the entire back of this garment kind of onto the sleeves. And then I'm gonna do a little left chest right now with uh, Strip Flock Pro. So I get a question all the time, what's your best way of kind of eyeballing or gauging the left chest? Um, all shirts are a little different and obviously the size of the shirt is gonna make that space a little bit larger. I'm, you know, I still kind of say work off the center of the garment and I usually go maybe a handprint in to about my thumb. Everybody's hand's different, so I get that. Uh, you really just kind of want to eyeball it. I'm sorry I don't have like an exact uh, measurement for it. There are tools you can get out there that do have an exact lineup for certain things or suggested lineups. Uh, so you might want to look into that. Okay, I'm going to do three colors of this Strip Lock Pro layered directly on top of one another for a left chest design. If you wanna gauge it off the sleeve, you can use a lot to just kinda of eyeball it. First layer, I'm gonna tack for five seconds. And I haven't changed my temperature on my heat press this entire video. I've been at 310 degrees for all the applications I've been showing you. My next layer, third layer is going directly on top. Five seconds. I peel. Final layer. And I'm gonna press this for the full 10 seconds. Now, Strip Lock Pro is, like I mentioned in the beginning, 410 microns, so it's very thick. I just put three layers of Strip Lock Pro directly on top of one another, uh, which, needless to say makes this one thick transfer but for the purpose of what we're doing here that's exactly what we want so to me that adds that awesome dimension the coloring that look everything layered directly on top of one another small subtle that's perfect that's exactly what i want now we're going to decorate the back this is where it gets tricky this is where we're all gonna run into something issue-wise. So I'm here to show you I'm exactly as human as everyone else. We all make mistakes, but let's give it a go. Um, ideally, when you do applications like this that are gonna be going longer than the garm or longer than the heat press, you do want to make sure you kind of start in the center. I'm gonna be applying this probably three separate times for my back piece here. Um, now, if you're using a home iron, you kinda of wanna do the same thing. I'm just gonna basically line this up the best I can before I apply it. Make sure I'm as centered as I can go. I am starting with the Easy Weed Stretch first. The Easy Weed Stretch is going to be my first layer. Now with Easy Weed and the entire Easy Weed family, you can press for one second, the one second tack. This way we can kind of do a faster application for this. So wish me luck. Here we're gonna start in the center. 
I'm gonna press this for one second, one to two seconds. Make sure your pressure is good for easy weed stretch. Now you don't wanna warp it too much. So this just kinda tacked it in a place you can pull it one way or the other, it doesn't matter. Also to let you guys know, I am gonna be pressing this directly over the seams of the garment, which you can do with our heat transfer vinyl. Just make sure your pressure is good. Make sure you have everything set up. If you need to use pressing pillows, you can use pillows. I'm gonna tack this side for one second. One to two seconds. Just to see where I'm at. Looks like I'm good on that side. I'm gonna pull it over to the other side and do my final press for the easy weed stretch layer. Okay. Now I'm gonna tack this, same as the others, one to two seconds. Okay, now let's hope this peel is good with easy weed stretch. You don't have to wait till it cools off. Maybe taking it off this is easier. Okay. Oh, got a little lifting, it's okay. If you see that, that's just an indicator. I might not have enough pressure. I might need to press it a little bit longer in spots. All I'm wanting to do at this point is basically just get the carrier off. It's okay, because we're gonna be pressing this longer. So I just want this carrier off. I'm good. That's exactly what I want. Now we're gonna do the next layer. The next two layers I'm pressing are Strip Flock Pro. So you could do this, either one of these layers. Now, the way this is designed, this is kind of what I'm talking about. So this was designed with one layer of the Strip Flock Pro to go on the outside edge, giving it, again, that faux embroidery look. So this is gonna be layered on top of the Easy Weed Stretch and also the garment. So you can be a little bit, uh, you know, take your time with making sure you line it up. In some cases, cutting it, if this is too much, if you wanna cut it to line it up a little bit better, that might help you out. I'm gonna just go for it. Sometimes just going for it, it works out. If it doesn't work out, it's a happy accident, right? So I'm gonna press this centerpiece for five seconds. And do what I did last time. Just kind of pull one side over, try to line it up the best you can. Again, it may not be 100% perfect, but it's okay. I'm gonna press this for another five seconds. One last press. Perfect. Now we're gonna take this off and do the peel across. Again, if you see any lifting, you just know where you have to go back and press it. A little lifting there, it's all right. Okay, it looks like this side needs to get pressed a little bit longer. See, press it again. You're good to go. Make sure that it's even pressure. Look it. You could even leave it at that so far. This is amazing. All the way across the back, again, showing that em faux embroidery look, but let's add that one more layer. One final layer to really add some dimension. More Strip Flock Pro. As you can see, three presses, still not so bad, right? Okay, since this is the final layer, I have my placement where I want it to. I'm gonna do each of these sections now for the full duration. So I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna press this for the full 10 seconds in the middle and do the same for each section of this transfer. All right, 
Now we're gonna take it off the heat press and peel our final carrier sheet. Perfect. Check that out. A full back down the length of the sleeve, well, sort of into the sleeves, but over the seams, three different layers. Again, it, it's got that varsity look to it, like a varsity jacket. That same type of effect uh, is Strip Lock Pro. Um, so seeing it in person is a little bit different than seeing it on camera but I wanted to just show you that possibility of giving what we call that faux stitch look using the Caesar Strip Lock Pro. What do you guys think? I mean, we've come this far, that's four applications for you, each one uniquely different showing the Caesar Strip Lock Pro. Have you guys got some ideas spinning? Um, what do you guys think of what we've done so far? Uh, what have you done with the Caesar Strip Lock Pro if you've used it before? We definitely want to hear, so make sure you keep chiming in those comments. Leave the comment of the projects you're working on. Anything regarding Caesar, we want to hear about it. Um, but I know I just said faux embroidery, right? We got a special guest for you today on this lesson. I'm going to toss it over to my friend Stephanie, who's going to actually show you an amazing project with embroidery on Caesar Strip Lock Pro. Take it away, Steph. Thanks, Joe. So appreciate that. I am so excited to be doing a project, and we're doing applique, and we're using Strip Lock. So can't wait to show you. The very first step that the machine is going to do is a placement stitch and it's just going to stitch and show me where to place that product. So the machine stopped and it's just waiting for me to put my material down. My material is going to be this chocolate strip flock. And usually when you cut it, it has the carrier sheet and I just need to remove that. So I'm going to cut this to give me enough for my project and finish taking that carrier sheet off. So we've done that placement stitch. Now I'm going to apply my vinyl and I'm just going to hold it with my fingers for just a second. And the next stitch is a tack down stitch and that's going to tack that down. And again, my fingers are nowhere near the needle. So that's finished stitching. So I'm going to show you a little bit of our magic. So traditionally with applique, we these are applique scissors, we cut away that excess of our fabric. In this case, it's vinyl. So I'm just going to do a little cut and then I'm going to save some so that you can see the magic of why we love using this product. So let's get ready for the next step. Here, I'm gonna change my thread color. I like using the pink just because it lets me see where the thread is. I'm getting ready to do a finishing stitch. So I'm going to do a color that matches a little better with the chocolate here. And away it stitches. Okay, so that step is done. The next stitches are going to be some decorative, so I just need to change the thread. I wonder if you can guess what it is yet. And away we go. Okay, so I went ahead and changed the thread, and this next step, again, is going to be a placement stitch to show me where to place. And I've already taken the carrier sheet off. So I'm ready as soon as the machine tells me to place this down. So I'm gonna place that down, gently hold it, and now it's going to do that tack down stitch to tack that material in place. And soon I bet you'll know what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off so that you can see a little bit better. 
I need to remove this out of the way and watch how easy and fun this is. Instant gratification. I'll go ahead and do the chocolate. Get that out. So do we have any guesses what it might be? I do not know. So now we're gonna add the sprinkles and the last bit of love. I'm gonna change my thread color one more time. Well, we finished stitching, not quite done yet. I'm gonna take this from the hoop here and I have a few little, they're called jump stitches that I want to get out of the way. This is another place where the weeder works good just to lift underneath that and get that thread loose. And then I'm going to just cut and cut to get that out of the way. So I have my next one. And again, this just helps to kind of lift that up to cut it and cut it. And then last one. And you can see there was one little piece I didn't get earlier. It's okay. I can use my weeder to kind of get a hold of it. And then look, pull that right out of the way. And that is done. I see one stray stitch. So stitching's done. I still need to add some vinyl. Be right back with that. Okay, so I've moved that out of the way and brought out the heat press. So earlier, you know, we were using a heat press vinyl. So what I would like to do is kind of set that in. I'm going to heat from the back side. I don't want that heat to directly lay on top of my stitches. So I like to do it backwards. I'm gonna cover that up with a cover sheet and press. I have to press at 310 because that's what I'm gonna need it for, for strip flock. And I just do like a seven second. Really, I just want that to set and tack down. So I have my donut. So now I'll get ready to press my vinyl. So here I have whatever sparkles and then your donut. And I'm gonna do that in two presses. One of the things that I like to do after I weed it, I fold mine, I've had the center and fold it in half. So that way it makes it easier when I lay it down to go to my center line and press that. So that's one of my quick little hacks. So I have my center line to go by. Then I'm going to cover and press. There we go. Now I'm going to press the bottom half. So you can see whatever sparkles your donut. I love embroidery, we all know. I love vinyl, we really know. And kind of like with our vinyl, we can do different sizes. So this is a five by seven design. I got the design from Design Bundles. And then I also made it larger for a larger embroidery hoop. So if you have a four by four, they have a smaller up to a bigger donut. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope y'all have a great time. See ya. Wow, how about that, right? Have you tried that before? I know a lot of you do embroidery. I've met a ton of you in the recent years and I know embroidery has been your jam, but have you tried to do it over Caesar heat transfer vinyls? Uh, we have Stephanie on our team now and she is an embroidery pro. So we're very excited to have her on the Caesar team. And she's been teaching all of us about embroidery on Caesar products. But I wanted to make sure you saw it with the Strip Lock Pro since that is our class today. Um, before we go though, again, keep the, keep the question comments going. But I want to just talk about something that we just launched here at Caesar North America in case you haven't seen them just yet. And that is our brand new sublimation markers. I know earlier in the class I was using the Crayola on my coloring books, but 
We did just come out with these. These are sublimation markers. So these are the markers that you can use on various polyester, white polyester um, uh, substrates. Something like this, which is a customized license plate. We've done customized books. We've done customized hand drawings of, of other things. Um, we just did a to-do list. This awesome uh, pillow, this sequence pillow, which still gets me every time. But uh, this sequence pillow that we, we colored in with the markers, these are brand new to the Caesar lineup. And that's what I have for you. Again, so many ideas with Caesar Strip Lock Pro. This is barely scratching the surface. I know you guys can come up with something fun and cooler than what I'm even showing you. So we wanna see it. Make sure you're sharing it with us over on our social medias. Make sure you hit that subscribe and like button here on YouTube. Um, thank you all so much for watching. This has been another episode of the Decoration Zone. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure if you don't have an authorized Caesar distributor or authorized Caesar reseller, you contact us at infocesarna.com. You all take care and I'll talk to you all very soon.